Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about scrotal imaging. This is the first video in this video series about differential diagnosis of hyperechoic intratesticular masses. During scrotal ultrasound, we may incidentally encounter with intratesticular hyperechoic lesions without any vascularity in color Doppler ultrasound. The patient has no any symptoms and no palpable mass in physical exam. These findings suggestive of hyperechoic intratesticular masses. But here is a question: What is the differential diagnosis of these? hyperechoic intratesticular masses. The first one is fibrosis or scar tissue. Another very important entity is burned out testis tumor in portion with hemorrhagic necrosis, the nomatoid tumor and intratesticular lipoma. Now the first one is fibrosis. Since scar tissue contains relatively high collagen content compared to other tissues, this may have contributed to the hyperechoic appearance of the lesions, most of which proved to be scar tissue on fibrosis. The second important entity is burned out testis tumor. What is the definition of burned out testis tumor? It is a regress testicular tumor which presents with its metastasis. The pathogenesis of this phenomenon may be that the high metabolic rate of the tumor causes it to rapidly outgrow its blood supply. The patients may present with widespread metastasis but no primary tumor except for an area of calcification within the testis. Here is a teaching case presentation. A 22-year-old male complained of hemoptasis weight loss and abdominal pain for the past two weeks. The patients had no relevant past medical history. Chest x-ray showed bilateral multiple variable size opacities suggestive of metastasis. Scrotal ultrasonography that revealed bizarre shaped macro calcification is present in the central aspect of the right testis. CT scan of abdomen and pelvis showed a large para aortic complex soft tissue lesions with central necrosis representing enlarged lymph nodes as a result of secondary deposites. The patient's serum beta human chronic gonadotropin was elevated, but other laboratory investigations including alpha fetoprotein were within normal range. Needle biopsy was obtained from one delong nodules and the final pathological diagnosis was concluded as choriocarcinoma metastatic testicular tumor. A right radical orchiectomy was performed and histopathology shows scrotal atrophy of the testis with scarred and fibrotic tissues. But there was no evidence of primary germ cell tumor in the testis. So, we must keep in mind during CT scan of the abdomen when large retroperitoneal tumors or lymph nodes are detected in young men, ultrasound examination of bilateral testis is recommended even if a mass is not palpable in the scrotum. The patients may present with widespread metastasis but no primary tumor except for an area of calcification within the testis. They often demonstrate little or no remaining viable tumor with mostly scarring and fibrosis found at histologic analysis after orchiectomy. The Seen cytotrophoblasts involved in these lesions with choriocarcinoma produce beta HCG, which is raised in these tumors. With early widespread metastasis, patients may present with symptoms referable to their metastasis rather than a palpable testicular mass. Sites of metastasis include the lung, liver, GI tract, and brain. 
the primary tumor and metastases are often hemorrhagic. At scrotal ultrasound, they appear as a hypoechoic or ill-defined intratesticular calcified lesion. Scrotal sonography is very important for the detection of intratesticular lesions, especially in patients with extra gonadal metastatic involvement in normal palpation for the testis. A burned out testicular tumor should be considered when punctuate echogenic foci are seen without any evidence of hypoechoic mass lesions. Metastatic disease secondary to burned out lesions has the same prognosis as the primary testicular malignancy. Another entity is infarction with hemorrhagic necrosis. Segmental infarct of testicle is a rare clinical entity that is usually diagnosed following orchiectomy. This color Doppler ultrasound image shows an avascular echogenic lesion with a hypoechoic center. The condition typically has an idiopathic etiology, also in certain cases predisposing factors for segmental infarction have been noted, such as hypercoagulability disorders, vasculitis, trauma, infection, testicular torsion, and iatrogen vascular injury. The most common symptom of segmental testicular infarction is testis pain, which is unspecific and indistinguishable from that of other differential diagnoses. Acute onset of testicular pain with normal levels of tumor and inflammatory markers and presence of a wedge-shaped avascular hypo or hyper a quick heterogeneous lesion on color Doppler ultrasound can be highly suggestive of segmental testicular infarction. The clinical and radiographic aspects of a case should be considered altogether to avoid unnecessary orchiectomy. Another entity in differential diagnosis is adenomatoid tumor. Adenomatoid tumors of the scrotum are benign solid extratesticular lesions that can originate from the epididymis tonica vaginalis or spermatic cord. These tumors represent the most common paratesticular neoplasms, accounting for about 30% of all such tumors. Some larger, primarily paratesticular epididymal or tonica vaginalis tumors may show infiltration into the testes and intratesticular growths, sometimes furting large intratesticular nodules. However, adenomatoid tumors with complete intratesticular growths are exceedingly rare. This is an example of intratesticular tumor. This ultrasound image demonstrates a lenticular hyperechoic area along the margin of the testis, which at surgery proved to be a benign adenomatoid tumor embedded in the testis. And the last entity is intratesticular lipoma. Intratesticular lipomas are rare intratesticular benign fat-containing tumors. At ultrasound, they appear as homogeneous hyperechoic non-shadowing lesions without any follow in color Doppler ultrasound, and at MR imaging, the lesions follow the signal intensity characteristics of fat with no enhancement. Here is another teaching case presentation. This image shows an intratesticular lipoma as an incidental finding in a 43-year-old man. Axial sonogram shows a hyperechoic intratesticular lesion without any following color Doppler ultrasound. And in MR imaging, it shows high signal intensity in T1 and T2, which is consistent with subcutaneous fat signal intensity. Another form of intratesticular lipoma is testicular lipomatosis. The ultrasound appearance is virtually diagnostic of testicular lipomatosis in the context of known Cowden disease. This is an example of known case of Cowden disease with 
testicular lip hematosis. His axial color Doppler ultrasound shows innumerable hyperechoic foci or scattered throughout both testicles, consistent with fat. Microlithiasis is the only similar entity, but these foci often demonstrate shadowing because of the presence of calcium and are smaller and show increased echogenicity. This is a good opportunity to have a brief overview for Cowden disease. Cowden disease, also known as multiple hamartoma syndrome, is characterized by multiple hamartomas throughout the body and increased risk of several cancers. The disease is characterized by mucocutaneous lesions, which present in more than 90% of cases, including trichelomomas, mucocutaneous papillomatous papules, gastrointestinal hamartomatous polyps, glycogenic acanthosis, thyroid abnormalities including thyroid adenoma and multinodular cuiter, fibrocystic disease of the breast, and finally testicular lipomatosis. In addition to benign hamartoma formation, the syndrome carries a recognized increased risk of cancer such as breast cancer in about 30 to 50 percent, thyroid cancer, especially follicular thyroid carcinoma, and in CNS, especially dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. During CT scan of the abdomen, when large retroperitoneal tumors or lymph nodes are detected in young men, ultrasound examination of bilateral testes is recommended even if a mass is not palpable in the scrotum, because we must always keep in mind that maybe there is burn all testis tumor. Acute onset of testicular pain with normal levels of tumor and inflammatory markers and presence of a wedge-shaped avascular hypo or hyperechoic heterogeneous lesion on color Doppler ultrasound can be highly suggestive of segmental testicular infarction. The clinical and radiographic aspects of a case should be considered all together to avoid unnecessary archaeotomy. Now, I suggest two others of my video that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.